What is going on guys? Welcome to Gregos TV Daily Rewind episode 26. This is where we go back a week and put all of my tech news videos into one single video to make your life easier and more efficient. And in this past week of tech news, it had a ton of Galaxy S10 news we heard about and saw actually what this phone is going to look like with some photo renders. We saw what the back is going to look like, how they're gonna set up their cameras, what material they're gonna use on the back of the phone. We also have Galaxy Note 9 news. We've seen the new Snow White color and what that officially looks like along with updates and information about the Galaxy Note 9. So tons of, if you're a big Samsung fan, a ton of Samsung news this week. It was really hot and heavy. Enjoy the show, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Let's get into the news. The first story of the day is about the OnePlus 6, which is a budget phone with premium specs that match a lot of other phones, and it's gonna be super cheap tomorrow. It's gonna be $100 off, so the price of it is gonna be $429 for the OnePlus 6, six gigabytes of RAM, 64 gigabytes of storage, or for $479, you'll get eight gigabytes of RAM, 128 gigabytes of storage. Now it's not the absolute newest OnePlus phone that's out. The OnePlus 6T is the ultimate newest phone, but that's inching up closer to $600 where you can get a OnePlus 6 starting closer to $400. So if, and there's no tax here cause it's, I guess a Chinese company or whatever, but uh, no tax when you buy this phone. So if you're interested in buying the OnePlus 6, which basically has the same specs as the OnePlus 6T minus, it has a notch at the top versus a little teardrop. The OnePlus 6 has a headphone jack. OnePlus 6T doesn't. Uh, OnePlus 6 has a slightly smaller battery. I think it's like 3,400 milliamps and the new one's 3,700 milliamps. Not a lot of big changes, but you still get that headphone jack with OnePlus 6. I'll link it down below. The sale starts tonight, tomorrow morning, whatever you want to call it, 3 a.m. Pacific. And the last story of the day comes from Sam Mobile, and it is exclusive information that they are releasing on the new Galaxy S10 phone and the Galaxy F, AKA the foldable phone. Let's first talk about the foldable phone. So the foldable phone is rumored, at least what they're saying, exclusive information, to have 512 gigabytes of storage, which would match the ultimate highest version of the Galaxy Note 9. Also, they will be rolling out the device worldwide and it'll ship available in silver and black colors. And it looks like it's going to roll out and be released in March of 2019. Next up, like I said, they also have exclusive information on the Galaxy S10. Let's talk about the colors and the colors have been going back and forth with what we've been hearing. They're saying that the colors for the Galaxy S10 will be black, white, yellow and green. Now those aren't, those colors are different than what we've been getting the last couple of years. As for release date, you're looking at February of 2019. This would not include the 5G variant of the phone. The 5G variant phone would most likely come along uh, as with as when the uh, Galaxy F phone comes out, which would be March of 2019. They're rumored to be releasing three models. One would be a budget version with no in-display fingerprint sensor. And then the two premium models would come with the in-display fingerprint sensor. Also, the cheapest version of the Galaxy S10 will only come with 64 gigs of storage. And the display sizes on these should be 5.8 inch flat screen for the cheapest version, 5.8 inch curved for the middle version, and then for the ultimate version, you're looking at 6.44 inches. Now, a lot of that information we've kind of already heard, but the February 2019 release date, that is definitely brand new. It's right around the corner. It's November right now. You're looking at December, January, February, three months until the Galaxy S10 is in hand. Let's get into the news. There was a huge drop of information slash news slash rumors slash photo renders of the Galaxy S10. First off, let's talk about the most ultimate version of this phone. There should be three versions of it and the most ultimate, you know, crazy version of this phone will be the Galaxy S10 Special Edition. Now, I don't know if that's gonna be the exact name, Special Edition, but we're gonna roll with it for now. So Special Edition phone will have 5G built into it, which is the successor to what we 
pretty much all use all over the world right now, which is LTE, AKA 4G. So that will have 5G built into it. And 5G really isn't everywhere at this point. It's being slowly built out uh, throughout at least the United States. I'm not sure about the world where how successful it is throughout the world, but United States, it's very, very limited in terms of where you can access 5G internet to get, you know, these crazy, you know, gigabit speeds or potential gigabit speeds. So that's one thing it's going to have. Also, we have photo renders of what it's going to look like. So let's check that out. Now this is a photo render. It's not officially what the phone is going to look like, but it also kind of matches what Ice Universe said it's going to look like, uh, which we'll look at in a second. But this one, you can see in the top left, you see the little uh, camera where the front facing camera will be. And then other than that, it's all display. It is really, beautiful like you there's i can't imagine someone would hate the way this looks or not like the way it looks it looks amazing the bezels are basically zero i mean it's almost i guess you basically 99 percent phone I, it's amazing look it's so cool looking um it's so futuristic uh, beyond a lot of other phones that are on the market at this point ice universe who is the most reliable samsung expert uh this is his render saying that the camera will be in the top right if I had to believe one or the other, I would probably believe that this one is probably correct. Ice Universe is, has a really good track record of being correct with different things. And you can see the navigational buttons at the bottom, the in-display fingerprint sensor, which it's definitely supposed to have. Um, the only thing we're not seeing is the back of the phone, which is rumored to have six cameras total on the phone, which is four on the back two on the front of the Galaxy S10 Special Edition. Now, the other big rumor about this Galaxy S10 Special Edition is that it's rumored to have a display size of 6.7 inches. This will be the largest Galaxy phone on the market, at least flagship-wise, 6.7 inches. When you look at something like a Galaxy Note 9, which has a 6.4 inch phone, you're adding another 0.3 inches to that. This is going to be huge, but it'll probably feel the same way in your hand as some of the other phones that are already out. Because remember, they have bezels on them. They have those black bars on them. So those are gonna be completely gone. So the phone in your hand shouldn't feel that much bigger, but you can have a much bigger display. Let's get into the news. The first story of the day, actually both stories are about the Galaxy S10. And before we go, into them real quick. There's been a ton of information and leaks about the Galaxy S10. Just yesterday, we saw what the phone's probably going to look like, and it looks really futuristic and beautiful and something that I definitely want. And today, we're getting a leak of what the screen protectors are going to look like for the Galaxy S10 and S10 Plus. Now, the screen protectors are kind of interesting looking because what we saw yesterday of what the Galaxy S10 was going to look like is it was gonna have a little cutout in the top left or top right where the camera's gonna go. And it was on the screen. And this one doesn't really have anything showing that. It does have a cutout at the top for the speaker where you're gonna talk out of it and probably hear audio just if you're listening to music or whatever. But other than that, it doesn't have any other cutouts for a camera. So it's looking at this, you would think that the camera's probably going to go underneath the display, underneath the screen protector, which at that point, is it gonna be optimized to take the best photos if there's another set of glass sitting over, especially tempered glass. Some tempered glasses get very fingerprinty. You're gonna have to always constantly wipe that thing down. We'll see what ends up happening. We'll definitely follow the story in terms of if more tempered glass comes out with the cutout or not. Maybe this is just one that's maybe not as great or expensive as some of the other ones that will have the cutout that will work perfectly fine. But from experiences with curved displays, most tempered glass don't really work really well. I know there's some out there that people rave about. I personally haven't had much luck with tempered glass and I've stopped using them at this point just because they kind of get in the way of the experience uh, with curved displays. So I probably still won't get it for the S10, but let me know your thoughts. Is that kind of, what do you think about that not having a, a cutout for the camera on the tempered glass? And the last story of the day is the material on the back of the Galaxy S10 in the last year or two it's been glass, so you know it can crack, it can scratch. There's multiple things uh, that it can happen that are bad with that. And it looks like the Galaxy S10 is gonna have a ceramic back, which would match the same backing that is on the Essential phone, which is 
Not a very popular phone, but it's a really easily accessible phone to buy here in America if you wanna buy from Amazon or whatever. You can, and it has a ceramic back, and the good thing about ceramic is that it's basically top three most durable materials. The only other minerals that can damage ceramic are diamond and sapphire, and I don't think a lot of people are just you know, taking out a diamond or a sapphire and try to literally scratch their phone with it. Man, this week has totally been Galaxy S10 news and leaks and things like that. We'll see what happens over the rest of this week, especially with it being a holiday. I'm assuming it's probably gonna be a little bit slow for, for news, but we'll see what happens with it. But anyways, guys, thanks for, before we get into the news, happy Thanksgiving. In America, it's a big holiday, and then the next day, tomorrow, is Black Friday, so it's a huge shopping day as well. So if you're in America, or if you celebrate Thanksgiving, happy Thanksgiving. Let's get into the news. The first story of the day is about YouTube. You can actually, and this has been out for a little bit now, maybe over a month, you can actually watch free movies on YouTube. They have about 100 movies on here, and most of them are 90s and 2000-ish type movies, but you know, just looking at this list, if you like Legally Blonde, they got that. What could the, what's the worst that could happen with Martin Lawrence in there? Uh, Zookeeper, Rocky, what is that, four? All kinds of movies, they have, looks like they have a lot of Rocky movies in here, maybe every single Rocky movie. Legally Blonde 2, All Dogs Go to Heaven, Hackers, The Man in the Iron Mask. Again, a lot of movies in here, so you can watch these on your phone your TV, um, your tablet, anywhere that you can watch YouTube, you can watch these. And if you have YouTube Red, uh, it's commercial free. Otherwise, there will be some commercials in there. Next story is about the Galaxy Note 9. Now, when I first got my Galaxy Note 9, sometimes when I would take a photo, it would like freeze up and I'd have to close out of the app. Or when I did a video, it would lag. And I guess a lot of other people are having that same exact issue. I it, it, it's funny, it like fixed itself really quick or maybe an update fixed it, uh, but I guess people are still having that issue where their phone will either completely lag when they do a video or freeze up. And it looks like Samsung is pushing out an update. No timeline for it, but I guess a moderator in the Samsung U, uh, United States forums has push, uh, said that Samsung will be pushing an update out to fix the freezing camera, you know, laggy video issue. So if you have that, you have some light at the end of this tunnel to get this fix, which is great to see. I, again, I only had it in the beginning of having my Galaxy Note 9. I didn't have it uh, any time after that, which is nice. Uh, but if you've had that issue, let me know in the comments down below. Um, and if it does happen, it should only be happening to the people that have the Snapdragon version of the Galaxy Note 9, not the Exynos version. So a lot of you international people have the Exynos version. Should not have, not have it, never have happened to you. It's always the Snapdragon people um, like myself and uh, other people. So again, if you have that problem, let me know in the comments down below. Let's get into the news. The first story of the day is about Hulu. Hulu is, as you know, it's Black Friday here in America, or if you didn't, now you know. Hulu is generally, with commercials, about $7.99 a month. It is right now $0.99 cents per month for a full year for new and returning customers. I'll link it down below. So if you love Hulu, they have mostly TV shows. That's really what they're known for, on-demand TV shows. And they've also got some movies on there as well. But for $0.99 cents for a whole year, it's a really great, amazing, no-brainer of a deal. Sign up, link is down below. You'll probably love it. And the last story of the day is about the Galaxy Note 9. In white, we've talked about this a week or two ago about this coming out, and it is officially out in Taiwan. You can get the Galaxy Note 9 in white. Up close and personal on the front, it is black, but on the back and on the sides, all white. Looks great, almost looks like kind of old school Galaxy phone, Note phone from the from the heyday when they used to come out with white ones. Uh, I think they had white, from what I remember. At least my, me my memory thinks there was. Anyways, it looks great. I like the white color. You've got um, the slightly different shades of white by the fingerprint sensor, it looks like anyway, and where the camera sensors are and things like that. The bottom, again, all white, and then white on the sides. It looks great. I, I would definitely purchase this color if it was available when I was purchasing my Note 9. And even though the, the uh, S Pen is white as well, so if you're looking to import a phone, you can from Taiwan, or at least you can try anyway. Uh, Galaxy Note 9 in white. Let's get into the news. The first story of the day is about the Lenovo Smart Display and also the Google Home 
hub, which coincidentally, I just did a video on this morning on which one you should buy. I give you two reasons why you should buy the Lenovo one over the Google Home Hub. And that's not what I wanted to talk about. I wanted to talk about an update that has been recently pushed out to these two devices that give it even more functionality. Here's a little quick guide of things that were improved. Touch alarms in quick settings, which is nice to be able to do an alarm uh, using touch. Remove favorite and shared photos, some more control over your photos. Uh, my cookbook is allowing you to save and retrieve recipes. That's always awesome. Thanksgiving recipe recommendations card. Nest Hello Doorbell two-way talk via touch. Before you couldn't talk to them, you'd have to, you could only do like press a button and do like pre-recorded uh, messages that weren't your voice. It was like a robot. Time faster to darker screen instead of home when in low light. Suggest turn off the screen or support for turning off the screen. That would say now you can have him turn off the screen when you need to. Bigger dark screen clock face, which was an issue with the Lenovo one. It had a smaller clock. Now it's gonna have the bigger one like the Google Home Hub does. Change display to minimum versus auto brightness and show previous feature when swiping off current feature. Next up, if you wanna get into the Galaxy game for a very reasonable price on Amazon, they have the Samsung Galaxy S9. And they've had this price pretty much a lot of other places, but um, if you're an Amazon person, you can get the Samsung Galaxy S9, not the plus version, but the S9 version for $519. So a very, very reasonable price for a flagship style phone. Now you can get the S9 plus on that same site for 637. So slightly more than a hundred bucks, 120 bucks, $118 from there. But again, if you're looking for a very inexpensive Samsung Galaxy phone that should last you a while, that is a great design. Uh, might not have the, the dual cameras that the S9 plus has. Um, it might not has, have as big a battery, but it has pretty much every other feature that the S9 plus does. Then look at the S9 for 520 bucks on Amazon linked below. And the last story of the day is from Ice Universe, a big Samsung leaker on Twitter. And he just put out a tweet showing that the Samsung Galaxy Health app that will be coming out or that is out right now, shows a little precursor of what to expect when you get the Galaxy S10. You can see the latest version of Samsung's Samsung Health tells us that the Galaxy S10's camera is aligned horizontally, not vertically, horizontally with the flash and heart rate recognition area. When you look down below, it looks exactly what you would expect pretty much with the Galaxy Note 9, except for there's no fingerprint sensor below. So you're gonna get the cameras and then you'll have the uh, heart rate sensor monitor and then no uh, fingerprint sensor that'll be underneath the display. Let's get into the news. The first story of the day is about the Galaxy Note 9. And if you wanted to be purchasing one, especially the Exynos version, if you don't know what the Exynos version is, is the processor that Samsung directly builds. In America, I believe it's China, Canada, and a bunch of other places, you'll end up getting the Snapdragon version, which is made by Qualcomm, that's the processor used. The Exynos version is the processor that Samsung makes, and some people like it more, some people like it less. Depends on you know what you like. In the past, it's definitely performed better than the Snapdragon, especially on Samsung phones. Regardless, you can pick up a Galaxy Note 9, 128 gigabyte uh, storage, six gigabytes of RAM with the Exynos processor for $650. You can get it in blue or purple. So if you wanna purchase it, I'll link it down below, uh, no tax and uh, you'll have the, the, the unlock, it's unlocked obviously, so you're not gonna get any bloatware or anything like that that you do with you know, other carriers uh, that say have AT&T or Verizon or Sprint or T-Mobile. Uh, this phone will only work on, fully work anyway, on T-Mobile and AT&T. So if you have Sprint or Verizon, I would not buy this unless you're just gonna use it as like a tablet. But regardless, 650 bucks is a really good deal for a Galaxy Note 9. And the last story of the day is also about the Galaxy Note 9, but it's about the Android Pie beta version, also known as the Samsung One UI. There's been rumors going back and forth. It's not gonna get a beta version. It will get a beta version kind of all up in the air and it looks like it's been in testing phases in the United States, South Korea and Europe. Uh, in the United States, it's only the unlocked version that you'd be able to probably end up getting this. Um, there's no exact time or release date or anything like that, or, but it, test builds are out there for those three areas of the world uh, for the Galaxy Note 9. So hopefully we, as Note 9 users will end up getting a beta version 
of this software. I know I would love to uh, download and install it easily. I know you can kind of go on the XDA forums right now and get it installed. I'm not into all that. I don't want to have to do anything crazy, install drivers on my PC, plug up the cable. I, I'm not into it. I want it to be easy and simple. And this, obviously, if it comes out in the beta version, will be very simple. You'll just download it like a regular update, reboot your phone, and you'll have the Samsung One UI. And uh, yeah, we'll keep our eyes on this one. Hopefully, like I said, it will come out for the Note 9. It's rumored to come out throughout the world in January. We'll see if that ends up happening, especially here in America when you have all these carrier variants, unlocked variants, and then throughout the world you have you know, Exynos and Snapdragon mixed throughout the world. Again, we'll wait and see if that ends up happening, but it's some glimmer of hope that we as Note 9 users in the United States anyway, because then that's where a lot of my population is, and a lot of my viewers, um, is we will get that beta version. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, new videos every single day. Question down below is if the beta version for the Note 9 Samsung One UI comes out, are you gonna download it or not? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. I'll see you guys down the road.